This is TNA, the new face of professional wrestling. The depths of one's exploration into the world of immortality can be measured by the choices they make and the chances they take. For the athletes competing tonight, the next step to immortality will be fulfilled by capturing the championship goal they strive to attain. America's Most Wanted voted Pro Wrestling's 2004 Tag Team of the Year on the heels of their epic steel cage match last month. Tonight, they attempt to solidify their legacy as the greatest tag team in the world today as they challenge the seemingly unstoppable Team Canada for the NWA World Tag Team Championship. Chris Saban, high flying, total nonstop action, exceptional, exciting, and extreme. Petey Williams, the current X Division champion, possessing the most dangerous maneuver in professional wrestling today, the Canadian Destroyer. The phenomenal AJ Styles, TNA Wrestling's only Triple Crown winner. Tonight, he attempts to regain the very championship he captured on the very first TNA Wrestling pay-per-view in 2002. Tonight, these three amazing athletes will compete in the ultimate contest of fearless aerial combat, a high-wire free-for-all exclusive to total non-stop action wrestling known as the Ultimate X. The alpha male, Monty Brown, has competed in two Super Bowls, but tonight he faces the biggest challenge of his life. Diamond Dallas Page, a three-time world heavyweight champion, determined to dethrone the king of the mountain and put his name in the record books alongside of the great names before him. Kevin Nash, a world champion in every organization he has competed for. Tonight, he puts friendships aside for an opportunity to capture the one world championship that has eluded him his entire career. Tonight, these three individuals will compete for the opportunity to challenge the reigning world heavyweight champion, Jeff Jarrett. The road to the world heavyweight championship will unfold before our eyes tonight. A trial of courage, a journey of sacrifice, a final resolution. Action Wrestling presents Final Resolution. Welcome everyone to Total Nonstop Action Wrestling. Tonight, live from a standing room only impact zone in Orlando, Florida, TNA presents its first pay per view of 2005. Get ready because it's time for Final Resolution. Tonight, the winner 
Jarrett has to face Jeff Jarrett later on in the program. Will they be able to handle both matches? Will they be able to survive to become the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion? And Don, who better to offer his opinion about that NWA World's Heavyweight Championship matchup than the King of Wrestling himself and the franchise Shane Douglas is outside Jarrett's locker room. Champ, it's me, the franchise. <laughs> Good night. Hey, thanks for having us in, Jeff. Big we're dying to get aboard with you if we could. You have a huge task in front of you. First of all, Kevin Nash, Monty Brown, and then Diamond Dallas Page going to be scratching and clawing, fighting each other just to get a shot at your world heavyweight title. Whoa. But, Jeff, the entire wrestling world is just dying to know. What if, what if it's big Kevin Nash? What if it is Kevin Nash? What if it's the alpha male Monty Brown? What if it's DDP? Diamond Dallas Page, I gotta ask you a question. What do you bring to the table at Final Resolution? Your diamond cutter, he wants somebody to feel the bang. Well, that's not gonna cut it when you're vying for the NWA World Heavyweight title and alpha male Monty Brown. I've said it once, I've said it a million, million times. He's a double-A ball player at best. And tonight he's gonna find out that he's bitten off way more than he can ever chew. And what if it is you, Kevin? Big sexy, seven foot tall you stand, huh? Well, you're gonna find out when you're flat of your back that you're 12 inches at best. Shane, I earn the right. Kevin, I earn the right. DDP, Alpha Male Monty Brown, I earn the right to call myself the king of the mountain because I went through four individuals in one match. So tonight's gonna be a takeaway. Dusty Rhodes came up with this big master plan. Well, it's gonna backfire, Dusty, because you're gonna learn one thing tonight, that this is Planet Jarrett, this is my world, and I will remain the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Well, there you have it, straight from the champ's mouth himself. Now let's get back to the ring for more final resolution action. this three-man team with two reigns as NWA World Tag Team Champions, most recently BG and Conan defeating Team Canada back in November at TNA's Victory Road pay-per-view before losing to the Canadians a month later at Turning Point. 
I'll tell you something, this is a great mixture of talent, a great mixture of skill, and a great mixture of experience. As you see the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels, and Conan squaring off right there. And you talked about Christopher Daniels, how close he came to being an ultimate X, which is later on tonight. Keep your eye on this guy, he is a star. Nobody doubts it, he is a star. Huge experience edge here for three live crew, both in terms of having all three members of the team working together very obviously, as well as the years combined of their in-ring experience. You see Conan using the experience right there, keeping Christopher Daniels low to the ground. And now Christopher Daniels, look at this, Conan showing his strength and fired up three life crew once. They want back in the title picture, and this is their chance to show that they deserve that shot. Don, we want to remind everyone that you can also listen to this broadcast as well as every Impact show in Spanish. Press that SAP button on your remote control. Tonight you can listen to Moody Jack Melendez and his partner Willie Urbina sitting in for Armando Quintero. I'll tell you what, Conan coming out fired up, just taking care of everybody. One, two, three, I mean, with clotheslines, which slammed, and now this is what the crew do best. They set up round the true killing to see if he can split oh. up right, and he does. Right through the post. That's good for three points. Round the truth killings off the top. It will land that leg on Michael Shane, and don't think back to impact recently and the problems that Michael Shane and Kazarian had with three live crew. Three live crew was in the ring working out with our broadcast colleague, our lead analyst, Jeff Hammond. And how about Shane and Kazarian coming down with a verbal attack on Hammond? Oh, uh, just showing the disrespect. It, it just, it's just their way of trying to, to stick in everybody's crawl. That's what Shane and Kazarian do best. But don't deny one thing, their talent and their ability to work together. But wow, Michael Shane just spit off a little more than he could chew right there with the truth. As three live crew in total domination in this match. Ron the Truth Killings, talented musician as well as a great wrestler, released his own rap album, really came into his own here in TNA, solidly establishing his career with two reigns as NWA World Heavyweight Champion, dropped toll hold, hot Kazarian coming in. I'll tell you what, Michael Shane had a nice counter, a good old jawbreaker on the truth. You thought it might be enough for him to, to see stars, but when Kazarian came in, the truth had something for him. And now here comes the teamwork by BG James and the truth. We talked about the experience that they have together. They're gonna show it right here with that double team. Just setting them up right now. That's, I think that has to do with working together for so long and having a time go, look at that, they're just in rhythm. They're fluid right now as BG James let them have it. Of course, BG James from the famous Armstrong Wrestling family, a tag team specialist, multiple reigns as NWA World Tag Team Champion, WWE World Tag Champ as a single, former WWE Intercontinental Champion, what a resume. You see Kazarian trying to get up there to make the tag, BG James just reels him right back into the middle of the ring. BG James using his experience, and right now the experience of three light crew has been dominant. Oh, wait a minute, the tag right there, referee when he says no. Well, I mean, look at where he's positioned, he's not actually uh, in his own corner. Absolutely, good call right there by referee Rudy Charles, you've gotta be on top of it because Michael Shane was trying to get in there so that Kazarian could get the tag because he knew he was in trouble. And, and look at this, now he reaches across and he touched the foot and Charles isn't gonna allow that. That's not a legal tag in his opinion. Well, the referee's gotta take control of a match like this, otherwise he can get out of hand. Oh, raking the eyes right there by Kazarian. Boy, how many times have we seen that in terms of a six-man tag match with just one official? Kazarian gets out, oh, and he does get the tag in, it is legal, and Daniels is tagged, and BG James didn't know it, oh, just cut him now, great teamwork. Well, they just sandwiched him there. Daniels caught him from one side, Kazarian from the other, you talked about it earlier, Don. Daniels, to me, just on the verge of breaking out in the X Division as a true superstar. I'm gonna tell you something, this guy has got so much skill, so close to beating Chris Saban. Chris Saban used his agility and, and actually was able to just kind of pull one off there to get it, but Christopher Daniels not going away, folks, and here he is right now, fresh, working together very well with Kazarian and Shane. So many interesting aspects of this final resolution pay-per-view, including Johnny Fairplay, the survivor liar, Tracy and Trinity, all battling to find out who's going to be aligned with the NWA director of authority, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty's got some interesting challenges for them. Well, two will stay and one will go, and we'll see who can survive, as you said, to 
stay with the director of authority, Dusty Rhodes. And now Michael Shane in the ring, and the momentum has changed. Wow. BG James, ever since he went out of the ring and chased Kazarian, that's when he got himself in trouble. He should have stayed in there and let them come to him. But once he went out there, Shane, Kazarian, and Daniels able to take over the momentum. Well, you're right. It has been all about ring positioning in this match. When the crew was in control, when they were in charge, they had the opposition on their side of the ring. But you're right, Don. Once BG James was taken into where he could be put into a double or triple team situation, oh, oh man, we've seen quite a comeback. I'll tell you what, that cost BG, but great counter by BG James. You saw Chris Fernandez going up China to give him some sort of a hurricane run if he could. And I'll tell you, BG James used his size, used his, his power, and just slammed him down. was there to make the save. Normally it'd be Kazarian coming in to save Michael Shane, but Daniels knew it was his place. Oh, nice kick right there by Daniels. Daniels and Zagiri on BG. Oh, man. What a face plant. K-factor by Conan. Super kick attempt by Shane. Conan able to reverse that. Cut him with a forearm. Now shot off into the ropes is K-Dog. Duck of the clothesline. Oh, they beat right in the middle. Right in the middle is the momentum of both of them. Took them both down. You're right, mid-ring collision. Both both the clothesline. Both It would be fair play's turn in the barrel. You know what I'm talking about? 
interesting situation backstage. NWA Director of Authority, Dusty Rhodes, with Tracy Trinity and Johnny Fairplay. To me, it's like two of them are going to have immunity, but one is going to be voted off TNA Island. Well, I'll tell you what, they're going to have to find the clue, and you wonder if anybody's going to kind of team up and try to get some alliances and work together. Well, we've heard about Johnny Fairplay and Trinity possibly forming an alliance. We'll have to find out. We're going to keep our eyes on that situation. You ready for an exhibition oh, shootout? Let's, Let's, do it, my my Let's head to the ring. I'm time, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, in our opening matchup, that six-man tag, we saw the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels, looking to establish, re-establish himself in the X Division after the breakup, the split of the Triple X Tag Team. Well, now it's our chance, our opportunity to see the other half of that team. Here comes prime time in X Division. Singles action. I'm going to tell you something. These two going to tear the house down. You are talking about two of the greatest athletes in TNA. These guys can do so many things. We don't have to talk about Brian Dunn. You've seen what he can do. Sanjay Dunn is another one. The player from the Himalaya can do things off the top of these ropes that normal men wouldn't even attempt. Think of the importance of this matchup. NWA Director of Authority, Dusty Rhodes, he's the one that ordered this X Division shootout. Obviously, the winner here is going to take major steps, major strides towards an X Division title shot. The loser, loser's gonna take a couple of steps backward. This really may be the perfect stipulation for two wrestlers that at least to me seem like they're really at a crossroads in their TNA career. Yeah, they are, and you know what, what is so important is how important the X Division is in TNA. It is prestigious. It's something that TNA put on the map. And that's why this match is so important to primetime, so important to Sanjay Dutt. Because like you said, it's their chance to catch the eye of the American Dream Dusty Rhodes to let them know that, hey, after Ultimate X, when the next title shots come down the line, I want to be recognized. I want to get in line. I want a shot at that title. Well, you talked about Ultimate X, and you look around the ring, Don, and you see those imposing steel structures. You see the steel cables hanging over the ring, all in anticipation of an Ultimate X matchup, yet to come here at Final Resolution with the X Division title on the line. And it's not lost on these two superstars. Just look at right there, the agility of Sanjay Dunn as he just kind of springs like a cat. Look at this. This guy can beat you so many ways. Man, he's so quick. He's so fast. You're right. It really isn't lost. On them. I mean, think about it. Wow! How many, revol how many revolutions was that? I've heard of a 360. I, I got it was a 720 type 2. I've got Dizzy just watching oh it. Oh my gosh! Sunday down the crowd just loves it. Man! You talked about how the importance isn't really lost on Denver Prime Time. Remember, they were involved in our last Ultimate X match for the best damn sports show on Fox. That's right. Both of these guys are very familiar with that X above them, and it's got to be kind of high. that he has here against Sanjay Dutt. And I really think that's the only way to go. Do you really want to try and fly with Sanjay? Yeah, well, and, and don't think that Primetime's not athletic and agile because we oh, know that oh. he is. I, I do think Sanjay's a little quicker. And like you said, Mike, you don't want to play this, you know, that game. You want to go out there and use what your strengths and strength is Primetime strength. It's been interesting that Sanjay has been concentrating his efforts on the arm oh, of Primetime, including springboarding off the top, connecting with the drop kick, play square, right to the arc. Get a tip. Sanjay Dunn has had a game plan with this match. He's obviously thought about this. He's probably played it over in his mind time after time. 
And Sanjay Dutt is just living that dream right here, right now. How, how apparent is this? Look at this, going right for the army. You can see the pain in Primetime's face. Well, Sanjay Dutt has already almost made it to his advantage. It looked like Sanjay was trying to pull the arm out of the socket. Oh. And, oh, man. Oh, my gosh. He has done it. He sees the weakness, and that's all he's focusing on. That's all he's concentrating on. Primetime's in trouble, Mike. Oh, could he be going for that Hindu press? Oh, already. That incredible 450 splash off the top. It's, boy, it's pretty early in the match, but he's going high risk. He's got to turn for that. Looks like Moonsault instead. Look at Primetime. Oh, what a move by Primetime. sure that it's in prime time's favor because I can't really see where he's at. But Sanjay not in control like he was just minutes ago. No, but it was crucial for prime time. He had to do something to stop the momentum of Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay Dutt was going up there for the Hindu press. If he hits it, it's over now. Prime time has a chance. You can still see how the left shoulder is hurting him. He's in pain. It might be separated. But he's just going to have to suck it up right here as he just slams Sanjay Dutt into the ring. I initially noticed it on the pin attempt by Sanjay. Almost as a prime time had a difficult time empowering out at two. You saw him favoring the arm. All of a sudden, just like that, prime time, oh, turned it around on Sanjay. I'll tell you what, looks like his foot caught the rail going up, just grazed it, which may stop some of the, the momentum of the kick, which probably saved Sanjay Dutt right there because he needed caught it flush. Could have been devastating. I'll tell you what, though, we know that Primetime can work through pain because he had to be in pain when we saw him in that six sides of steel at turning point. And I'll tell you something, Primetime is going to have to fight through this shoulder injury. And it looks like he's doing just that now. Let's see where Primetime. Oh, oh man. That's great. Now you can see what it did to him, though, Mike. Look at that. There's no question that he's favoring the arm. Just in elevating his opponent, just in taking Sanjay Dutt up into the air. You saw how much that, you saw the pain that, oh, oh man, you saw man. the pain that Primetime had, but talk about pain. What a stiff kick to the back. And you can oh. almost see the welts on the back of Sanjay after that kick. That hurt me. I mean, look at Primetime. What a physical specimen this guy is. He's the total package, man. He's got it all. And right now, He's got it in his favor. Oh, he misses. Comes back around, though. That didn't miss with that second kick. Sanjay down, primetime pin attempt. Has the leg hooked in. Just a two count from referee Mike Posey. I'll tell you what, you can see the determination now in primetime's face. He feels like the tide is turning right here. He knows that he probably can't stay out there very long with the way the shoulder's hurting. He's just going to have to go over. Could he be going for the play of the day? That's exactly what it is. Oh, nice counter by Sanjay Dutt. Sanjay obviously scouting. Oh, oh scouting he got the knees. But you saw prime time. He obviously scouting his opponent as well. He got the knees up to catch Sanjay springing off the ropes. You know, sometimes it's all about having the counter, having the perfect counter. Not the perfect move, but having the perfect counter. When one person puts it all on the line, feels like he's going to end it. And then you go oh. and look at the streak. What a slam. That just by prime time. He gut wrenched Sanjay, took him up and slammed him down to the canvas. I'm so impressed, though, with, with Sanjay Dutt's ability to avoid that POD. How many victories have we seen prime time get with the play of the day? And you know what? I've never seen anybody counter it that way before. I mean, it's obviously, like you said, something he scouted, something he's watched, something he thought, what would he do if he was going to put in that situation? Oh, look at that. What a wow. By prime time. Such incredible agility. And so fluid as well. Slingshotting himself back into the ring from the ring apron and then connecting with the clothesline. I'll tell you what. Primetime did just what we said he had to do. He's using his size and his strength to his advantage. Not trying to high fly with Sanjay Dutt. Not trying to out athleticize him, if, if that's a word. And not trying to out X division him. Right. That's, that's, trying that's to say. absolutely. Got a position Ooh, nice out. elbow right there. Up on the top. Elbow forearm shot that time by prime time. Now going to follow him up and from the middle rope. Sanjay holding on for dear life here. Trying to get some Fighting him off. Even leaning against the post that's used in the ultimate X. And here he goes. Wow, he's landed down. What a move by Sanjay Dutt. You need a combination there. Like a sunset flip into a powerbomb. Sanjay, I don't know, that may have taken all the strength.
strength out of him to come up with that move. But he had to because he could feel that prime time was getting close. He could feel that prime time was gaining more confidence with each second. Sanjay Dutt had to do something. Had to do something to stop. Prime time in his act. Standing room only crowd here at the Impact Zone. So appreciative, I believe, of the efforts of both of these competitors. Prime time back to his feet first. Sanjay waiting. Caught him with the right hand. Wild. Close line. Oh, yep. Nice. Spin. King right there by Sanjay. Nice elbow. Wow. Elbow. Close line follow up that time by Sanjay. Going to take prime time out. Him down, backdrop suplex, roll One, over. Two. No, he kicks out. It looked like Sunday was beating Primetime at his own game right there. Sanjay trying to dig down deep, realizes that he's back in control of this match. Wild what, right, but it connected. It connected. You can see how it connected. You can see the pain in Sanjay's head. What a move by Sanjay Dunn. This is his. Tilt a world DDT. This is his. One, two, One, two three, no. Time kick out of that. So close. Another near fall for Sanjay Dutt, but unable to gain that most important of all, that third count from the referee to score the pinfall win. Go about, high risk again. Think about what's going through Dutt's mind. What have I got to do to win this match? Well, maybe this is it. Here he goes. Oh, prime time out of the way, but look how cat like he was when he lands on his feet. But for that hit, there didn't connect. You're right. Prime time avoided it. Elevates him right into the ring ropes. Gonna take him off. Up to the shoulder. He walks where no man dares to walk, seeing what no mortal has seen. Anguish, pleasure, unthinkable horror, of which he is witness, tenant, and creator. He's coming. So I was driving over today, and I think to myself, you know, at this point in my career, I want to work smarter, not harder. Right? Yeah. So the way it's laid out right now, one of us has got to be two guys to get a shot at the world title. So what are you saying? You're going to spend a lot of energy to do that. By the time you get the world title, maybe you got enough, maybe you don't. Now I figure you and I, we do this together. We take out Brown. Well, bro, for starters, I'm always a guy standing on his own two feet. Goes back to the NWO. I understand. I stood by myself. Right. I'm just saying this, man. We take him out. We take us a two, three minute break. Right? Right. Get our juices back. Then we have us a match, like a couple of gentlemen for the world title. And then we go on. So we, you expect me to trust you? <laughs> yeah, you can trust me, man. Look at my eyes. <laughs> Trust in Kevin Nash. What a concept. How about this? How about this? Actions speak a lot in words. I put a hand on you, deals off. But I don't put a hand on you. At least think about it when you're out there. I'm not going to put a hand on you, bro, until he's gone. And after that, like I said, two gentlemen for the belt and everything with it. And it's on. It's on. Trust in Kevin Nash. You trust me. <laughs> what a concept. Yeah, yeah, um, we forget what was it, about a couple, two 
two, three, four, four. I called him out. Yeah, he didn't do too bad either. Didn't look too bad, a little fat, a little ugly, but you know, didn't do too bad. Hope things go all right for you here. Well, that is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. Check out this strategy. 
You see how perfectly placed Bam. the drop kick was to the leg, to the knee of Dustin Rhodes. That's actually smart strategy on Kid Cash's part. Oh yeah, you Dustin Rhodes down to the mat, making your own size. Well, not only that, you've got to make it to where Dustin Rhodes is unlevel, basically. Dustin Rhodes doesn't have confidence on both legs. You've got to get it hurt and makes it even slower. Kid Cash knowing that he's going to have to use every trick in the book to beat a man of this size, and he's doing it. You know, I had a bullet point here. I had a note that Dustin Rhodes needed to maintain his poise against a man that will do anything, and I mean anything, well, to take him out of his game, and it's exactly what we've seen from Kit Kat. Oh, he played possum to the point where he had the referee calling over Jerry Borat to maybe even stop the match. Ah! He even had Dustin yeah. Rhodes buying into it, and then he saw his opportunity, the window open, and he dove right through it. Yeah. Ooh, look at him wrenching that left leg into that left knee. Spinning toe hole by Cash. Look at this. Just pulling up on it, twisting and turning it. Look at the pain on Rhodes' face. Oh, Dustin just trying to fight through the pain. Oh, that's a good move. Grab the hair. Nice shot. Another nice right. Series of right hands, a pair of them to the head. Now Rhodes off the ropes. Going to try the backslide. And he's got him. Two. No. Kiss Cash just barely gets out of it. Did you notice when Dustin Rhodes Tried to get back up to a vertical base and did. He looked like he was still favoring that leg and that knee. Yeah, he's just a little bit wobbly right there. And obviously, you saw why. I mean, Kid Cash has pulled on it, twisted it, and you can see him writhing there on the mat. Dustin Rhodes right now is not 100%. That is absolutely obvious. And the complexion of this look, matchup. Look at this. You talk about swinging a full 180. That's exactly oh, what we've man, seen. It hurts just watching it, Mike. Yeah, back to the spinning toe hole. Here he goes. Oh, great oh, small, small package gains Dustin Rhodes another near ball, but then he's clipped from behind. I'll tell you what, though, that was showing his experience right there. Dustin Rhodes had saw an opening and took it. But Kid Cash not letting up right here as he just leveled him into the back of the leg. It's a difficult situation for Dustin Rhodes. You come into a matchup against Cash with a, with a certain pre-match strategy that you have, and I'm sure that Dustin Rhodes was, was thinking that, that he was going to try and use that power edge that he has. But that but the move by Cash, when we were all suckered, when we all bought in, well, you know what? Turned it in his favor. It's like a great pitcher in baseball. You got to have both your legs to have, you know, to have the proper velocity. You have got to be able to stand on both feet to have your strength. He's wavering. He's wobbling right now. Kid Cash is in total command. Cash measures him, drives a right hand to the side of the head, and oh, he went to Irish whip him across into the turnbuckles. Dustin Rhodes just went down in a heap. Wow, now he just applies his knee to Rhodes' knee. This has just become a lesson in taking a body part and taking it out of play. Oh, man! We, Man. we talked about the frog splash earlier, but I had no idea that he would use that move to come across the leg of Dustin Rhodes. And now check this out. Figure four drops back, caps it off, and Dustin Rhodes is in trouble. I mean, Mike, look at this. He's not even necessarily trying to win right here. He's just trying to hurt Dustin Rhodes. He's just trying to inflict any amount of pain that he can. Maybe trying to make it so Rhodes can't go on. Yeah, but this could be a situation here with this kind of an injury to the knee of Dustin Rhodes, where you apply the, the torque to the knee from the figure four, yeah. where Dustin Rhodes could be forced to tap out and submit, going to try and fight through it. Oh, absolutely. Look at him just pull back on it right there, and you can see Rhodes is thinking about it. He's trying. He's reaching up. Trying to muster any kind of strength, something to pull him out of this. Crowd here at final resolution. Firmly, strongly behind Dustin Rhodes. Trying to get that adrenaline rush for Dustin here to make that comeback and to mount the comeback against Cash. Well, you can see a kick Cash holding on for dear life. But I think he's losing confidence in his position, but look at Cash. Perfect counter by Dustin. Yes. Able to turn it over. He's got the longer legs as well. Now Cash is in trouble. Look at Cash. He's fighting it himself. He just a minute ago, it looked like he might get Rhodes to submit. Now Cash has got a debate on it. He's got to pull loose, and he does. This is obviously going to impact the balance of this matchup. Dustin Rhodes slow to get back up to his feet, using the ring ropes just to get back up, and Cash caught him again right in the knee. Nice kick right there, and he is just concentrated on that left knee. And... Oh, but you see right there, Rhodes knows it hurts, and now he's got it. He used his strength, and he threw him off the ropes, and he's got him in the headlock. Sleeper hold applied by Dustin Rhodes. Cash able to shove him off, oh, and he's got him in the sleeper hold. Look at this. One of the great 
great strategic move by a smaller wrestler like Cash against a bigger competitor like Dustin Rhodes is to use the sleeper hold. You take your opponent back down to the mat in control and not allow Dustin to use the size edge that he has. You can see Rhodes trying to reach over and grab a rope, anything to stop this, to break this. Kid Cash pulling back on him, and you can see Rhodes looks like he's running out of air, running out of oxygen. Referee Thomas right on top of this to see if there's a choke, and you can see that you see it. Cash maintaining the sleeper hold. Referee Thomas pulling on the arm of Aaron Dustin drops. Rhodes to check to see if, right if Dustin Rhodes no, still has anything left. It's like a limp noodle right there. Look at that. It's just dropped right now. Wait a minute. No, no. Wait a minute. He's not ready. Hey, he is fighting. Maybe kind of playing off a little bit. See if, if Cash might let loose. I don't know, but he's fighting up to the one leg that he's got. Yeah, that's, I mean, naturally, normally you would say, get back up to your feet, Dustin, but you're looking at a one-legged wrestler at this point, and look at him fight through that pain. Right hand to catch oh. him back as well. Dustin connects. You see Kid Cash trying to fight back. He knows it's not. is his chance because you wonder how long he can go on and, oh nice counter right there by Rhodes got a faked out cash great drop down and then extends and connects with the right going to take him up inverted atomic drop oh leg went out the knee went out it did you can see right there as he just buckles to the ground is he going to tap out right here? Well, I don't know, but the kind of attack we've seen by Cash on the knee of Dustin Rhodes just limits Dustin's offensive attack so much. Kid Cash going up top right here. He knows that Dustin Rhodes is so close to being finished. Here he goes. He's got it. Wait a minute. Rhodes rolls him over. Did he get it? Did he get it? Was it two or three? Just two, says referee Thomas. Oh, man. Saw the crossbody block off the top by Kid Cash. That was close. Momentum attempt but cash able to avoid it what would you say two and nine tenths i'll tell you what that one would get a replay in some football games i'm gonna tell you that cash able to slide through wild kicks does it connect can he go for the call here oh, oh look at that land on his feet he's so agile nice spinning kick right there by cash now he goes two Two bimbos can't survive Johnny Fairplay. That's all I know. Go look for the clue. You go look for How to Outwit Women by Martha Stewart. <laughs> That's my kind of book. How about? I do need to find. <laughs> oh, what do we have here? <laughs> the Dreams Hats. How about that? Hee-haw! I'm from Texas. Look at me. Wow. I'm the American. Fair play staying in TNA, baby. Here's the clue. Woohoo! Hey, Dust, I'm on my way. Like what Dark Vader said, there's a genesis arising. And the Alpha Male is at the center of that genesis.
Hey, yo, like we always say, keep your friends close and your enemies close. The main reason I came here is to become the NWA world champion. Because I'm all about tradition. Make, make it clear, I'm here for the money. No disrespect to Mr. Three-Time World Champ DDP. Kevin Nash, you held titles everywhere you've gone. But that was then. This is now. DDP, thought you'd be bigger. Stay out of our business. friends in the planet eric i want to know it what happened my brother you don't know you don't know do you you're willing to forgive the unforgivable you don't know about watson the thing do you <laughs> man i thought you knew you don't know about the thing <laughs> you're ruling this private life you're a two-faced man <sighs> and you're gonna pay page. something maybe maybe earn a little respect but no He's still disrespecting you, but you know me. You know my fighting intention, my fighting value, and what I mean. It doesn't change the life. No. You know I mean? See, you call Watts' wife, telling her that it's me. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's screwing around on the road, and we both know me. Well. Hey, hey. So, we man. Trust him, trust him, right? We trust him, his best friend. Me. You were never hey, much. Hey. I won't cost him his job. You know why? Because I like having him around. He's never gonna listen to you. Because I got him wrapped around my little finger. And what? what are you doing? He's standing right behind me. <laughs> no! Big something. Around your finger.
and that's Raven. And he'll do whatever it is to get the advantage going his way. He'll play both ends against, against the middle every chance he can. He tried to do it with DDP and Eric Watts. It didn't work. And now he's got to face Watts one-on-one. -on -one. I think whatever mind control that Raven had over Eric Watts is in the past. When the lines of communication were opened up again between Diamond Dallas Page and Eric Watts, they both realized that it was Raven who was meddling in their personal business. You can see right there Eric Watts coming out with a chair and knows the kind of person that Raven is, I think, trying to come out with some kind of advantage, but Raven just put the boot right to the head right from the beginning. Eric Watts, so intense, so focused as he came down towards the ring, but you see that Raven was prepared ready and waiting for Eric Watts, and Raven takes over right at the start of the match. I'll tell you what, Eric Watts, though, is going to have to try to find a way to use that patented choke spam that he's got, something to, to level the playing field, but right now, Raven just sends Eric Watts right out through the ring into the rail. I agree with you halfway there. Yes, Eric Watts needs a way to, to use that choke slam on Raven, but at the same time, oh, he's got to avoid the Raven effect DDT, maybe equally as important. I'll tell you right now, too, he's got to be careful how that Raven doesn't slam his back too many times into this rail. And you know how Raven likes to do it once, twice, three times, sometimes four. He'll just go right in there, get a little count in the ring, and get back out and do it again. Now yeah, rolls back into the ring to break the count. Then back out to the arena floor again for more pain and punishment. You saw the pair of side rushing leg sweeps. Taking Watto back first into the steel. Raven down to the floor. And now right hand after right hand to the side of the head. Well, Raven, I think, is just mentally in the head of Eric Watts. Eric Watts coming out here, wanting to kill the little revenge, wanting to take it out on Raven. But Raven, knowing exactly what he's doing at all times, he set this moment up, and it's going to his advantage. We invite you to go to our website, tnawrestling.com. Great merchandise available, including Final Resolution T-shirt and poster. We've got TNA T-shirts, Impact shirts. DVDs involving some of the greatest matches in TNA history, entrance music CDs as well. It's all on our website. Check it out, tnawrestling.com. You can see right there Eric Watt just taking the brunt of everything that Raven can give him. And Raven just toying with Eric Watt right now, Mike. Just toying with him. You know, you talked about some of the great things at TNAWrestling.com, the, the phenomenal AJ Styles DVD, one of the hottest sellers. Not to mention the best of the X Division, the best of the title matches. It's just a, a great place to shop. Raven maintains his control. Eric Watts has just never gotten tracked in this match. And another pin attempt, and yet another near fall for Raven. Yeah, he's just, like you said, not gone on, got on track at all. Raven just... Absolutely doing whatever he wants at this point. If he wants to throw him outside the ring, he does. If he wants to throw him in the rail, he does. If he wants to send him in the turnbuckle, he does. He just absolutely is having his way. And now he slams his head right there on the front of the mat. You see Raven stalking Eric Watts right here. Now look at him. He's just pulling right there on the mouth of Eric Watts. Just exacting any kind of pain and punishment that he can infringe on him. Throwing him again in the tournament. Oh, nice elbow by Eric Watts as he, oh my goodness, Watts jumps up to the top rope and kind of kicks him backwards like that. It was a great counter. It was almost like a mule kick and a drop kick at the same time. Well, he had to do something and I think he, he was just waiting for his moment. As Raven, I think, just kind of let up a little bit. Now Raven walking up the ramp as Eric Watts chasing after him. And from what was Raven thinking right there? Was he just trying to... Yeah, was he bailing out? Was he trying to leave? Or was he trying to take Eric Watts outside the ring? Well, that's Raven's playground as well. Yeah, I mean, it was a cowardly move. I mean, he was in total control, and all of a sudden, one thing didn't go his way, he walks up the ramp. Tell you what, though, Eric Watts trying to get some momentum right here. He needs something. And oh, he uses Raven's own move against him as he powers up against the rail. And now Watts, feeling like he's turned this thing around. Oh, he just flung him that time again, back first into the steel. 
You can see right there that Watchdog is in pain from the beating he took earlier. It's now become somewhat of a brawl. Watch him. Oh, man! Crunched him. Dropped him right across the steel safety rail. Oh, you can see the pain there, Ray's face. Look at that. Watch just grabs him and flings him to the floor. Absolutely. As you, as you, of course, he's making reference to Raven when he was doing his, his little motion with the finger like he just owned him. Eric Watts now wanting to go for the choke slam, as you can see. He's got it. He's got him throttled. Going to try and take him up for that he's choke slam. Yes, oh, he's down. Oh, oh, oh. Beautiful move right there by Eric Watts. As that's what he needed as he's got Raven right now. Capacitated, and this is a chance as you see what's bringing in the steel chair. Referee Posey. Just, oh, I'll tell you what, it wasn't a no DQ match, so Posey had to pull that chair away, and then that just gave Raven a chance to crotch on him right there. Yeah, that momentary distraction was really the difference. That allowed Posey, the, the second that he turned around, I guess you're not surprised that Raven took advantage of that. Oh, absolutely. And that's what Raven does. Gets into your head, gets into your mind. Now Raven now going outside the ring. What's he doing now? He's grabbing the chair. See if referee Mike Posey makes the same decision right there. He's trying to tell him, no, he can't use it. But it's still set up there in the corner. And, oh! Slam Derek Watts head right into it. Face first. Head first into the steel chair, had it sandwiched between the top and middle rope. We've seen this before as well. We know how much Raven likes to use the drop toe hole. Let's see if Watts is prepared for him. Gonna shoot him off and... Oh no, Eric Watts countered it, grabbed a hold of it. He used it, slammed his head on the chair. Well, at least one thing. Referee Matt Posey's letting him, at least letting them both use it now. But you can see they're both in so much pain. Referee puts in the count. Raven already up to a knee and now up to a vertical base. Positioning the chair again, the steel in the middle of the ring. We've got Watts. Got him right around the head. What's he gonna do now? Watts. Nice break though by Watts right there as he just yeah, fighting through it. Just took both of the hands and slapped it to the side and oh nice move right there by Raven as he pulls him into the ropes. And here goes Watts back after him off the chair and he catches him. Great shot there by Eric Watts. Using the chair to his advantage. Watts still favoring his arm, though you see him holding it limp at his side. Jumps at him. Thrust kick connects. Gonna go for a pin attempt? No, gonna go for a series of right hands. You can see right there is Eric Watts just using every opportunity he can to catch Raven with the right hand of blows and now going over and going up top. You know, think about this. Eric Watts has been in this ring a long time. This is not something that he's been doing. In a long time, he hasn't wrestled a match like this. You wonder what he's got in him. And you can tell you that Raven took advantage of that. Only a two count for Raven, but right back to the offensive. He to take Watts back up to his feet. Left hand after left hand, and then went for the discus clothesline. But again, Watts saw that move coming. Oh, you can see right here. Watts taking him up as he goes slamming down. Oh, right into the ropes. As he's got Raven on the ground right now, this is a chance for Watts to take advantage of it again. I wonder what, how much he's got left in the tank. Pin attempt by Watts, and no, Raven able to roll the shoulder in two. I'll tell you what, though, for somebody that's not been in the ring for a while, Eric Watts has shown himself admirably as he's thought about this. And oh, nice counter right there by Raven, doing a little mat wrestling right there. Yeah, submission style, ankle lock now. Oh, he's line. got it. Watts has got to somehow get to a bottom rope, somehow, some way. Cranking on the ankle, cranking on the knee as well of Eric Watts. It is Raven with the submission move. Pulling him there so the Oh, nice counter there by Watts as he flips it over. Yeah, if you can outpower your way out of a move. Oh, oh nice man. kick by Raven as he nails it. Super kick that time. Leads to a pin and leads to another two count. Tell you what, Eric Watts just fighting with everything that he's got. Oh, Raven turns him inside out. Now Raven, almost if he's motioning for Eric Watts to get back up. Get back to your feet and fight me. Because you know Raven's got something. 
something in store for him here. Oh, he is. Calling Eric Watts to get up, just daring him to come at him. And now, Raven makes the charge. Watts makes the counter. And Watts now. Submission move of his own. Point to the STF. He's got the cross face applied. He had the leg grapevine at the same time. But Raven able to power out and go back to the ankle lock. Oh, you can see right there again. Raven pulls him back into the center of the ring. Watts countered it before. Can he counter it again? Oh, he gets a hold of a rope. And now, Watts using the rope for leverage. Oh! Did you hear the impact yes. of that? And he's got him again in the choke slam. Oh, but he just couldn't quite get him up right there. You can see that Raven was able to pull him down and counter it. Hook to the midsection. Got him throttled. Going to take him up. Oh, slams him down. It's choke slam. Game. One, yeah. two. He's got it. Pinned him. Eric Watts. Choke slam. Leads to the three count as he gets the victory over Raven. Unbelievable, Mike. If you would have told me that he was going to defeat Raven in the ring after being out of it for so long, I wouldn't have believed it. And Eric Watts does just that. Choke slam leads to the pin and the victory as he gets this victory. He gets this win over Raven. Wow. I'll tell you what, it was a chance for him to get a little even with Raven after all the mind games that Raven played with him. After all the times that... Oh, wait a minute. Raven's got the fight. <sighs> 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 Uh, What's going I'm on sorry. here? Uh, uh, I know this sounds insincere. Uh, I let my hatred for pain blind me. Uh, I didn't respect you. Uh, I didn't respect, I still don't respect Paige. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry? He's apologizing to Eric Watts. Family, but I never had a family. I've never had any friends. Uh, well, that's You're your my choice. Only friend, Watts. I know you won't forgive me. You're asking for me. But I'm sorry. Asking for Watts' forgiveness? Are you kidding me? Obviously, Watts isn't buying into it. Never seen this side of Raven before. Oh, forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. He knew it. He just reaches up, grabs the garbage can, and just slams Eric Watts down. He's a snake. You can't trust a thing he says. Master manipulator, master of mind games, and he strikes again. You see now security right there. Heavy D, Don Harris coming over. We'll put a stop to this. Fortunately, security there to try and separate Raven from Eric Watts, who has been laid out. Wow. Mike today, Don West back at ringside. I want to remind you about our next Sunday epic three-hour pay-per-view event against all odds coming up on Sunday, February the 13th. Don, also new schedule for Impact. I hear just incredible ratings on Fox Sports Net for TNA. Friday at 4, as we see on our monitor here, security helping Eric Watts to the back. Friday at 4, the first showing two great replays. It's Saturday morning, 2 a.m., as well as Saturday at midnight to check out Impact. Wow, what a lineup we still have to come, however, this evening here at Final Resolution. Think about it, Mike. We, we've still got three titles That's right on the line. We've got the tag team titles. We've got the X Division with the innovative Ultimate X coming up. But let's not forget the elimination match. Diamond Dallas Page, the Alpha Male Monty Brown, Kevin Nash. The winner of that gets Jeff Jarrett later on in the night. Do you hear the backside? Music sounds familiar? It can only mean one thing, Professor. Think about it. Who better than the hot rod to referee a match that is about nothing but revenge for Jeff Hardy? Think about the history between these two guys and even here at TNA with Scott Hall. Oh, look at this. Oh. How over the top can you get 
with this Elvis outfit. You know, those of you who joined us, one of the kings of wrestling. Yeah, those of you who joined us back in November, Don was just mentioning in our Victory Road pay per view, you will certainly remember what Scott Hall did that night when he prevented Jeff Hardy from winning the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Quite honestly, that man Scott Hall cost Hardy the title, and the two continued their battle last month at Turning Point. What a great chance here for Jeff Hardy to gain revenge. Speaking of the charismatic enigma, here he comes and the root of it all up that way. I want to point out that Hector Garza, originally scheduled for this match, is involved in a legal situation that precludes him from appearing tonight in final resolution. But if you think back when Jeff Hardy arrived in July of 2004, what a huge free agent acquisition it was for DNA. That acquisition was spearheaded by Dusty Rhodes. And you'll recall, Jeff Hardy had just one request to Dusty. Get me a shot at the NWA World's Heavyweight title. Well, Scott Hall ruined that chance. Jeff Hardy found out that there was an opening tonight for a match against Scott Hall. Jeff Hardy approached the NWA director of authority, Dusty Rhodes, and Dusty was more than happy to allow him the opportunity to seek revenge. Oh, it's great drama. I mean, when you think about what Scott Hall did to Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy in a match of his own making, a ladder match, and he was in total control of Jeff Jarrett at that time. Things were going right his way. He was getting ready to become the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. And then Scott Hall, one of the kings of wrestling, came out to Jarrett's aid and turned the tide in Jarrett's favor. And that cost Jeff Hardy that championship. And Jeff Hardy hasn't seen that championship or shot at that championship since. This is a chance for him to get the payback. Troubleshooting referee Rowdy Roddy Piper interviewed recently by our website, TNAWrestling.com, and he made it clear that Scott Hall will not be able to hide behind his friends. Oh, look at that. I wonder wow. If Scott Hall's or to hide foreign objects in either. You wonder if Scott Hall's ever been in that position before. Excuse me? Think about it. Getting, getting searched. You know, when, when Piper talked about oh, hiding. Oh, look at this. Yeah, hiding behind his friends. What's he got? The kitchen sink as well? Roddy Piper, so familiar uh, oh, with the tactics of Hall and Nash through the years, and he's experienced them firsthand. Who better to have here than Piper as the referee? Now what's he doing? Look at this. Unbelievable. Scott Hall had every trick in the book. That's why he wore the Elvis costume out here, because he can hide all the gadgets. And how smart now does the move by the director of authority, Dusty Rhodes, look? by bringing in Roddy Roddy Piper. Absolutely, somebody that knows the dirty tricks of Scott Hall. What's he doing? Oh. He's going to check out the hot rod right here. He's frisking Piper. What's the hall? Oh, handcuffs. What do you think that was for? There's a lot of questions that need to be answered. Piper says, let's wrestle. Hardy open hand slap to the back of Scott Hall. How about an interesting trivia note for you? When Jeff Hardy started his professional wrestling career, his first match in the WWF, his opponent, Scott Hall, one in the same. Talk about their paths crossing years later. It always comes full circle. Oh! Nice counter, nice kick by Jeff Hardy. Now that was perfectly placed. <laughs> oh, man. Shot off into the corner. Look at Hardy. Boy, I tell you what, he's on no. top of his game. He just crept up to the top of the ropes right there and just catching Scott Hall off balance. A unique double spring move there by Hardy. May have caught Hall unaware. It might have even caught Hardy a little bit. Looked like he kind of caught the top of his head. And I think Scott Hall realized that too. Hall going to position Hardy against the ropes. Now shooting across. Back of the clothesline by Hardy. You can see the size yeah, of the try, try to cross body block. Hall caught him in midair. Oh, man! Just spit him right over the back of his head and slammed him. Fall away slam. Here's one. one. Here's two. Barely a two count from referee Piper. Oh, you, got, you know, I almost thought it was a slow yeah. count myself, but you can see Scott Hall feels like it was. Not happy with the cadence of the count. Oh, here we go! Oh, one, two. Two. <laughs> What'd you think of that one? Was that a little better? I thought that was a little quicker. Uh oh Oh, yeah, quick Small roll up. Package. 
Now, Scott Hall is trying to figure this out right here. He knows he got a slow count. He knows Hardy got a quick count. So he's got to regroup and rethink what he's going to do. As you see Piper counting him out. And Scott Hall. Oh, nice kick right there by Hardy to keep him up. Here goes Hardy over the top. Oh, catches him, and that wasn't, that wasn't a pass. There that Scott Hall landed on. And Scott Hall was milking the count. Hardy not going to let that happen. Gunning for revenge. Ooh. Oh, man. Into the steel steps. Crash down across the shoulder of Hall, takes him into the steel, and again just tosses him, just flings him down to the floor. It's like he caught his head into the ring post a little bit there, too. Jeff Hardy doing everything that he can to exact all the pain that he can on Scott Hall. Especially now knowing that Scott Hall, what Scott Hall had in store for him oh. with everything that he brought into the ring. Nice shot there by Hardy. Double leg drop by Hardy. Hall reeling here at this point. Even having a difficult time getting back up to his feet. Hardy's ready for him. Caught him with a pair of right hands. Ooh. Look at that. The elbow right to the back of the head to the back right there. Yeah, just, yeah, such a, just, he's exploiting the size yes. advantage that he has. Just that opportunity to reach back and to drill him with those elbows. Follow up clothesline in the corner by Hall. He used that weight right there into the corner, you can see, and just caught him with the arm over the neck. And here he goes again. Look at that. Just swing shooting that arm right into the neck of Hardy and just knocking the breath out of him. Follow up clothesline in the corner by Hall. Crowd here, chanting for Hardy to try and mount a comeback. Ooh, nice right right there by Scott Hall. And I'll tell you what, that was not open. Yeah, I was getting ready to say, Piper's now letting him know, make sure it's an open hand, because that was a closed fist. Hall. Working on Hardy. Ooh, look at the death hair. Lock. Pulling back on the arm. Got the legs death lock, cranking on the arm as well, and you're right. Grabbing onto the dreads of Jeff Hardy. Now, just kind of trying to humiliate him right exactly there. exactly what it is, paint brushing him. I'll tell you what, though. Piper trying to keep this thing fair. Right down the line. It's his job as troubleshooting referee when Dusty Rhodes puts you in this kind of a position. And he's got when, the hair again. Yeah, when the director of authority is relying on Piper to make sure that Hardy gets his opportunity for revenge. Oh, pin attempt off the slam, and nope, just two. Again, that count just did it seem slow to just you? Just a little bit to me. Just a little bit. And again, you can see Scott Hall just doing everything he can to humiliate him because he knows. Oh! Oh, he throws him right into Piper. Went to shoot him off into the ropes, you think? Or do you think that he had the intention? Oh, that was no of, accident. Of firing Hardy right into referee Piper. No accident at all. Hall was looking for every chance he could. Oh, what's he got here? Oh, you gotta be kidding. Looks like brass nuts. He's got him taped up right there. He's got him in his hand. Wrapped around his hand. Hardy doesn't stand a chance and he gets hit with this. Oh, I love it, Piper in time. Oh, both the eyes. Not gonna let him have the advantage. Yes. Caught him with the twist. Hardy. Is he gonna go for the swan time here? Victory, Jeff Hardy scores. 
deserves it. Jeff Hardy oh. just knocked off Scott Hall. Next world heavyweight champion. muscles your arms are huge so anyways my little problem was um you seem to be around dusty's office all day long and i was uh -huh. just wondering if you had any idea where those little clues were and if you could possibly yeah, help me up um oh you went and dropped the tool tracy tracy what? it's dusty he's like up to here at work he told dusty? me to come get you he needs us both he's he yeah both? Where chaos is he? in his office where? he needs us both come on i'll show you right behind you. Hey, that's your business now. So, come on, do you know where the clue is? I really don't have a clue. You know, you really don't have a clue. Well, we just saw Tracy with a double threat in the back, but now it's time for the triple threat elimination matchup. And most importantly, the winner will go on to challenge the man on the right of your screen, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Jeff Jarrett. So important right here, as these three all want a shot at the title tonight. Now we'll taste them. What's got to be going through their minds, Mike, is they've got to get a victory as quickly as they can. Each one of these are thinking that, because if they do, it'll leave them a better chance and better shape when they face Jeff Jarrett later on. He may have spent much of his athletic career on the gridiron, the former National Football League linebacker with both New England and Buffalo, but his heart and his mind always on the wrestling ring. He may have competed in the Super Bowl, but his dream was always to be NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Tonight, the alpha male can accomplish that dream, but first he has to win this high stakes triple threat elimination matchup. I'll tell you what, we saw how close he was before becoming the World Heavyweight Champion. So close. But Jeff Garrett able to come out on top. No money. Brown's been thinking about nothing but becoming the champ. But here's the intrigue, I think, that you mentioned earlier. Not just who wins this, but the intrigue and what would happen if this man wins. When the boss, NWA Director of Authority Dusty Rhodes, added the name Kevin Nash. Match to determine tonight's challenger for Jarrett. Dusty knew exactly what he was doing. Dusty realized that Kevin Nash's ego would take over. When you dangle a carrot like the NWA World's title, you have to know that there would be dissension within the ranks of the kings of wrestling. Dusty's plan to fight and conquer, and that plan looks to be working me. to perfection. Well, it only D proves my today that this business, your only friend. Jared in the NWA title. Think of those multiple reigns 
and that momentum that you need. And he's always been good with the crowd, and they're behind him right here. What a matchup this is going to be, Mike Denae, because every one of these three has their own personal reasons for wanting that title. And who in? Another question. Will DDP and Nash be able to work together? Well, just what I was thinking about. I was going to bring up the dynamics of this three-way triple threat matchup. Earlier, we saw that very interesting proposition that Kevin Nash had for Diamond Dallas Page. Remember that they had a mutual understanding. Stay out of each other's business. But Kevin Nash approached DDP, asked him to join forces tonight to take out Monty Brown. Well, it's not a bad strategy, too, because, you know, you've got to eliminate somebody. And he felt like, look, let's work together. Let's eliminate Monty Brown, and then we'll go at it. You know, I don't think it's that necessarily bad of a, a strategy, but you can see that DDP, I don't think, trusted him. For That's the key word. You heard what Diamond Dallas Page said. Trust Kevin Nash. Oh, look at this. DDP working on the... something what bothers me what worries me about Monty Brown is his lack of experience with the two other people in that ring right there at DDP and Kevin Nash but to his advantage you can look at him and realize what an athlete the alpha male is he truly is an alpha male and what an athlete who's focused on one thing and you know what that one thing is Ron the NWA World's Heavyweight title Monty Brown has been dreaming of this moment since the time he was a kid to us. You were there, Don. What did he have in terms of, in his, on his bedroom wall, what posters? It not wasn't, foot, not yeah, it wasn't Johnny Unitas. No. It wasn't Joe Namath. It was Dusty Rhodes and Nikita Koloff. Think about that. How about one other story? When Monty Brown played in the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl game was in Atlanta, Georgia. What did Monty Brown do in Atlanta, Georgia? He went to main event fitness to a gym, hoping to get a look at one of the wrestlers that he admired. That shows you the determination and the focus that Monty Brown has had for years. Well, it's like when you talk to him and you ask Monty Brown about his his career goals, and, and everybody thinks, well, he's doing this because football's over. No, this is his career goal. He's doing what he's always wanted to do. Football just gave him an opportunity to get to wrestling, not the other way around. And how close did Monty Brown come recently on impact? In a matchup against Jeff Jarrett, I'm going to tell you, he came just oh. this close to beating the king of the mountain. I've never seen anybody shrug off a guitar shot like Monty Brown did in that match on impact. You can see right now yeah. Nash. Well, look at Nash mocking oh. Monty Brown. Very big height advantage that Nash has over just about anybody. Trying to hold, trying to hold up there at him. And Nash, right at the seven-foot mark. Alpha male Monty Brown, 6'2", fighting back out of the corner. using his experience right there. Adding to the intrigue, the match, the, the way the match is unfolding in front of us, seeing how earlier it was DDP and Monty Brown squaring off, while Kevin Nash sat back and watched. Yeah, they're taking their turns, Mike. Now DDP, he's sitting back while Nash and the Alpha Man fight it out. You know, I, 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 I wonder if they can work together. I don't know that they even really are, but at least they wow. kind of are. Oh, look at the size of Nash. Was that it was. Side slam by Nash leads to a pin attempt, but only a two count on the alpha male. I'll tell you something, this is smart by DDP right here. We saw Nash doing it earlier. Poor old Monty Brown, he's had to face off, like we said, one after the other. If you're not in it, rest a little bit, because you're going to need every bit of your strength when it gets down to one-on-one. -on -one. In this triple threat elimination match, there are three ways that you can be eliminated. You can pin your opponent, you can force him to submit, or you can throw him over the top rope. Mini gauntlet, sort of, in this stage where actually they're, you're, you're down to the finals, but you can still be thrown over the top rope even when you're down to the final two. Pin submission over the top, that's how you're eliminated in this triple threat bout. You can see Nash outside the ring there trying to catch his composure. Monty Brown again, not getting a break. The alpha male not getting a break at all. DDP able to counter that hammer lock with a back elbow. Oh. Get 
hope is in his sight. He knows it's in his grasp, but he wants it bad. Discus clothesline by Page leads to a two count on the alpha male. Tries to shoot him off. Monty Brown stops. Oh, oh man. Great move right there by Monty Brown. Knee, then the DDT, then the cover. Nash in to break it up with the elbow. I'll tell you what, that's not just an elbow either. That's seven feet, 300 plus pounds of an elbow. Yeah, dropping down on you as Nash just did on Monty Brown as he broke it up and made the save at two. As you can see right here, it looks like a little double team action right here of Nash and Page. I don't know, we heard Page earlier. I'm, I'm not buying into the fact that Diamond Dallas Page is joining forces with Nash. I and mean, you can't blame him here for a double team in the corner. No, but I'll tell you what. That's just smart strategy. Kevin Nash, though, is keeping to his word, the word he gave DDP. And look at this, Monty Brown just... Obviously, they both fear Monty Brown. They know how dangerous he can be as the two of them are setting it up to take him out. So this oh, oh, wait a minute. Element him up, man. Down. He's out. He's been eliminated. Over the top and down the floor. One of the three ways that you can be eliminated. Nash taken out by DDP. And look at Monty Brown well, you on can, the attack. You can see the look on Nash's face. He thought he had DDP set up. He lured DDP in. But it didn't work because DDP didn't trust him. And now Monty Let's see if we can see this again. 
for the diamond cutter. He countered it, and then he leveled him, and I just think the exhaustion set in at that point. And there you see it. Alpha male Monty Brown connecting with the pounce on DDP after Kevin Nash already eliminated from the matchup. Monty Brown scores the victory, and he will challenge Jeff Jarrett for the NWA title later tonight. A chance to realize his dream. Oh, he's so close. You know he can smell it now. What I want to know is how good a shape he is because he's going to have to reach down deep because Jeff Jarrett's just waiting in the wings. But DDP, you can see the shock on his face. He just set himself. I think if DDP would have been able to What's hit this? that diamond cutter. Look at, oh, look at that. Nice show of sportsmanship right there. The mutual respect exhibited by Diamond Dallas Page and the alpha male Monty Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, coming up next at Final Resolution, NWA Tag Team titles are going to be on the line. It's going to be Team Canada against America's Most Wanted. Dusty Rhodes has already decreed that should AMW defeat your team, they will get that title shot at Final Resolution. No problem, Dusty, because it's a moot point. America's Most Wanted is not going to get the job done. Oh, you know he's got his sights out. Oh, young Cardiff, young counters. Turn it around. Oh, they're oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, oh, no way. Oh, Referee Charles distract. Wait a minute. What? Get in. Stop. He turns on him. Get him. Get him. They got it. They got it. They got it. They get the title shot. Six time world tag team champ. Your dreams of becoming six time NWA world tag team champions will simply become a nightmare. Team Canada goes to the top of AMW's top 10 most wanted list. It's simple math, boys. There's going to be a fight. <laughs> You're not going to win. Two New Year's resolutions for Team Canada. One, to continue to spread our dominance throughout the wrestling world. And two, to finally come to terms with and realize that Americans can't be anything other than what they truly are. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for the first of three championship matchups. It's time for the NWA World Tag Team titles to be at stake. And let's go to the tag lines and break it down for this tag team championship matchup. Let's look at the bullet points for this tag team title bout. Will America's Most Wanted be able to keep their focus Avoid a potential letdown after competing in the match of the year last month against Triple X at Turning Point. DeMore's Team Canada, possession of both the X Division and the tag titles, hold the championships, hold the power. You know how much DeMore loves to be in control. Publicly stated goal, dream as well as Storm and Harris become NWA tag title holders for a sixth time. Can AMW keep the momentum rolling and regain the NWA World Tag Team title? Today, this is something right here. When you think of tag teams, you think of AMW. It's synonymous with AMW. But this team, Team Canada, love them or hate them, and the crowd showing this is approval, you've got to admit one thing. They were in the prison. As good as any tag team in history. And again, they've also got the coach, Scott DeMore Factor, who will find any resolution Harrison Storm did it you know you mentioned it there in the tagline the both of these guys are going for their sixth tag title reign but think about it it's really only the fifth time if they win it that they will be tag team champs together each of them held the championship with one of the members of Triple X 
already. It's been a long, long time, Mike, since, since these two have been tag team champions, and I'm talking about Eric Moore. There you see the close-up look. Team Canada coach Scott Demore in a special secret strategy session, obviously, with his tag team champions, Bobby Roode and Eric Young. So there's that, that hockey stick that he uses to support the Canadian flag that we have seen brought into play on so many occasions, Don. You saw right there, Demore pulling a Randy Johnson and shoving up the camera. Oh, AMW is not going to sit and wait. They bring in the fight right to him. They can take just so much of your posturing, Demore. That's exactly right. Somebody get this get, guy away from our table. Get this big load away from us. You better worry about your team and not worry about the announcers, Demore. I'll tell you right now, AMW, you talked about intensity. You asked about intensity. Well, they've got intensity. They've got intensity.
to Moore. Trying to get the troops to turn this thing around. Trying to regroup with Team Canada, but having zero effect. Oh. I'll tell you something right now. This has been nothing but a pure unadulterated fight. Forget about a wrestling match. This is more like a hockey match. <laughs> And you see right now Bobby Roode trying to get something, and you see Storm, oh, nice elbow, though, by Roode. But again, Storm just continues the onslaught. Just when you think that Team Canada is going to turn it around, AMW regains control. Oh, what a move right there by the Cowboy. One, Tampa, two, two, and Ronda oh, oh, man, I don't know how Roode was able to withstand it. I'm going to tell you, oh, takes a nice left shot there by AMW. Boy, AMW has turned it. Eric Young from outside. Oh, that was what they needed right exactly there. Exactly it. Drilled Storm with the kick, which leads to that spinning neck breaker by Rude. I'll tell you what, that's exactly what they needed. Bobby Rude able to take advantage of the team, of his teammates. Kick right there in the corner, and now they're going to do a little double team right here. And I'm, I wouldn't want to be James Storm getting a little revenge. Talking about Team Canada. Canadian style payback? Yes. They'll do everything they can to keep Storm on this side of the ring. Not to even let him get near Wildcat Chris Harris. Not while they've got an opportunity to exact some punishment right here on AMW. Oh, look at that. This the throw, the windpipe of the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm. Oh, across the steel cable, across the rope with Young's weight behind it. The cheap shot from outside by Coach Demore. There was no tag. I'll tell you. Slapped him. There was no tag. No, there wasn't. But I'll tell you what, this shows you how resilient Team Canada is. And they've always been resilient. Always been resilient. Boy, well, you're right. Just to survive yes. the type of offensive onslaught that we witnessed from AMW over the course of, what would you say, the first five to seven minutes of this match? And you know what? I wonder how much that's going to take out of AMW. They came with the offensive front. They came with everything. They came with tanks. Suplex, tanks. two. No. They came with the entire offense. And somehow, someway, Team Canada withstood it. And you're right. That may send a message right back to AMW. The fact that, that you hit us with everything, but we're still alive. Man, the importance of this matchup, so evident, so obvious, it's so physical, because the NWA World Tag Team titles are in space. Oh, great counter right there by Bobby Roode as you saw Storm come off the ropes, thinking he had a shot, and I'm telling you what, Bobby Roode, love him or hate him, can flat out rest. Caught him with the knee to the midsection. Now going to try and drag Storm over to the side of the ring where Eric Young. Again, I, I, I mentioned this earlier, how they keep Storm on this side of the ring. Not going to even let him get close to Chris Eric if they can help it. Now the legal man is Eric Young. And you talk about exacting some revenge. Realizing that that knot is swelling up on his forehead. And also recognizing that the Tennessee Cowboy, James Storm, is the man that's responsible for that. What a shot right there by your right. What's he got to lose at this point? Tries for a quick pin. You can just see the look in Eric Young's face right now. They know it's turned. They know it's gone in their favor. Now, what's going through the mind of James Storm? He knows he's helpless in the ring right there. If he stays out there too much longer, he's got to get to his partner. And they're not letting him anywhere near him. Don, we've talked about it ever since Team Canada was born. The perfect mix that Scott Demore has assembled here. You've got the power man who's in the ring now, Bobby Roode, a true heavyweight. You've got Eric Young, his tag team partner. You've got Johnny Devine as well, and of course you've got Petey Williams. What a crew the Canadians are. I'll tell you what, crew's a good word, but one thing you've got to admit, and that's talent. Every one of them. Can't be denied. Cannot be denied. As much as you and I hate everything that Demore stands for, it cannot be denied that he is assembled an incredibly talented crew with Team Canada. There you see the well, think about it. Here. He holds three of the four belts here at TNA. Both the tag team belt and the X division belt. Man, he's put together a crew. And that's what I'm talking about. We talked about the resilience. Now look at the strength of Bobby Roode. This guy matches up with anybody. And outside, uh -oh. Young holding Storm. Roode charges at him. But you see Storm fight back. Crowd with the oh. troops of the USA. As the Tennessee Cowboy connects, he caught him at the ends of Geary. Now he's trying to go. He catches.
his way to the side of the ring to get his partner in. Oh, oh look Bobby at Roode. that. Come on. Bobby Roode just in time. And I mean just in time. And now Roode picks up the cowboy. I mean, Storm is taking a beating in there. And look at this. Eric Young going high. High elbow. Top rope elbow drop. One, two. Oh, Storm kicks out. And I don't know how he did it. Oh, look at this. Throttling. Choking. The referee Charles is there to put in the count and force Eric Young to break. How much can Storm take? How much can Storm take? I don't think it's ever been more important for AMW's James Storm to get the tag in the Wildcat Chris Harris. Oh, he was so close to and Bobby Roode foiled that plan. And now Eric Young in total control choking the air, choking the oxygen out of the Cowboy James Storm right here. You can see referee Rudy Charles checking the vitals of James Storm. They have done such an exceptional job of keeping James Storm away from Wildcat Chris Harris. Crowd here cheering for AMW, cheering for Storm to get back up to his feet, and he does. Now off the rope, Storm back to the clothesline, springs off the rope, ducks the back elbow. Sunset flip. What a move! One, two, two. Oh, nice counter, though. As Eric Young used his feet into the exhausted on Storm is inevitable. And they just cut him off at the clothesline. Tag in with the power man, Bobby Roode. Roode. Oh, just plants that knee. Drops the knee across the chest. Follow cover. Just got a two count. Wow. Storm miraculously able to power out just before three. Grinding that knee into the back right there of Cowboy James Storm. And again, I've never seen anybody take the beat that Storm has taken. Especially after him and Harris gave, it, gave one at the beginning of this match. And Wildcat well, Chris Harris has got to have pent up frustration. Pent up frustration just waiting to get in there hoping that Storm can muster up the strength, muster up the energy, and he's trying. Oh, but just as you think he's getting there, he gets slammed right back down to the mat. Bobby Roode right there grabbing the arm of Storm. Showing his strength, and again, though, Storm, oh, he misses. Nice comeback, though, by Storm. Look, Bobby Roode, oh! Great counter! And Storm sends Bobby Roode into the steel ring post. Can he get the tag in now? Harris extending his arm into the ring. Storm just, Storm is close. Look at that. He's about a foot and a half away. He just needs to roll. Resilience again. 
Gonna take another look. There's the replay. Wow. Now back live. Float over by Rude. Super kick connect. Storm on target. Does he have enough strength to gather and go for the cover? Gonna try one, one two. two. Oh. oh, wait a minute. There you knew Gamora was gonna do something, and he did it right there. Damn him. Damn that Gamora. And look at Harris. He is kicked off. How much of this can you stand? Oh, look at he's caught in the oh. middle of an AFW sandwich right here. Yeah, look right here. Yes, sees AMW fight 
Go find a team that can't wrestle here. They cannot have been here. Go find a tag team somewhere in this country. Bring them to me. And the the the, the cowgirl that brings me the best team, you know what? Becomes to. my personal secretary at TNA. You ready for this? Go get them. Go find a team. Let's go. Dreamers, warriors, risk takers. And we see in them the hero in us. Athletes who defy insurmountable odds. Men who dare to dream. For only those brave enough to chase dreams are the ones who catch them. TNA Wrestling presents Against All Odds, live Sunday, February 13th on Pay-Per-View. When it comes to wrestling pay-per-views, yes, TNA has raised the bar. And please join us Sunday, February the 13th for Against All Odds. Ladies and gentlemen, you are witnessing the final preparations for Ultimate X. Steel cables, steel structures there in place. There you see the X Division Championship belt. Get ready for the most innovative, most death-defying high-wire match. The showcase for the X Division Daredevils. Ultimate X is next. On Sunday night, January 16th, at the final resolution, pay per view, the DOA, Dusty Rhodes, has already declared that the current X Division champion, Petey Williams, will defend that title in perhaps the most amazing match in the entire history of professional wrestling. I'm talking about the Ultimate X. They are exceptional, exciting, and extreme. They are the X Division superstars of professional wrestling, and their exploits can only be found in TNA. Chris Saban. Perfectly with it. Oh, right into the back of the rail. Oh, look at this. Saban just put up the right cast. Here's the go. You gotta be kidding. Saban. Oh, look at that move by Saban. The phenomenal AJ Styles. dominating and the longest exhibition champions of all time. And what better way of proving them a class above the rest than defending it in an Ultimate X match. Tonight, these three amazing athletes will compete in the ultimate contest of fearless aerial combat. 
a high wire free for all exclusive to total non-stop action wrestling known as the ultimate x strap your seat belts on it's time for the ultimate roller coaster ride known as ultimate x the champion on the right pd williams there you see the two challengers let's break it down with the x factors ladies and gentlemen x division championship hanging in the balance and it's fake here are the bullet points it's almost as if this ultimate x matchup was just made for one man one of the three chris saban in 2004 saban competed in three of these high-risk bouts and was a perfect three for three yes straight straight ultimate x victory when you think of the x division you think of the phenomenal aj styles but aj has yet to win an ultimate x match tonight he can add a victory in the most innovative bout to his resume pd williams now owns the record for the longest stint as x division champion tna history over five months in counting will that reign continue it's time to find out Nobody's done more than twice, and that's become the four-time X Division champion. On the other side, Chris Saban has a chance to become only the second person to win three X Division titles if he wins here tonight. And you said it, Petey Williams has held this belt longer than anybody. What a matchup! Let's get it on. You mentioned earlier that you were selecting Chris Saban. He was going to be your pick in this match. Well, Saban with the victory on Impact this week over the fallen angel Christopher Daniels. He qualifies. That puts him in a position to regain that title in a matchup that, you're right, was very, very good to him in the year 2004. I'll tell you something. I don't know how you can top what we just saw, but if anyone can do it, three of the greatest athletes in the world in one of the most high-risk, one of the most feared matches of any opponent. One of the most challenging matches that's ever been aired on television, on paper, or on anywhere. Ultimate X. It's what you want to follow what we just saw. Petey Williams on his bicycle. Chris Saban chasing him around the ring while AJ just waits patiently. And you know what? It's a great word to use for a match like this. And that's patience. You've got to wait. You've got to have eyes in the back of your head. You've got to wait for your moment. And when you see it, you've got to seize it. Because if you don't, you're awful high up in the air to mess up. We talked about saving the three wins and the three Ultimate X matchups in 2004. Maybe you factor in the familiarity that Saban has with the man that just got nailed, Petey Williams. This could be his night. What a drop kick in the corner. How about the teamwork between Saban and Saban right there? Just a little couple shots at Petey Williams. Chance of TNA from this standing room only crowd. Sardine into the impact zone. Oh, that is a 
Oh, how about Kenya? We have been, we've got them outside just listening to the noise on the door. It's just like they can feel the action. Saban and Styles, and oh, AJ quickly kicks to his feet. Cutting with a forearm smash now. Styles shot off into the corner, able to throw it over. Saban. Oh, going for it quick. Saban knows how to do it, but AJ not going to let you. Well, that's what just happened in this match. Saban and Styles worked together. They knew that it was an opportunity to do it, but they also didn't fool each other. They know that they're going to go against each other with this match. If we can work together, we will. Oh, AJ went up high to get it. Well, you're right. That's the realization here that it is every man for himself bottom line. As we saw AJ trying to spring off that top corner tournament with the take down the belt. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the way that you win this match is by taking down that X Division title belt. The competitor who's able to climb across those steel tables and take it down.
Can Am Wrestling School. But Saban went his own way. William stuck with the more. And now you watch AJ up on top. I thought for a second he was going to leap across and try to take down the belt. Well, he's tell you what, he knows that you've got to take your opportunities. Hitting somebody at the bottom doesn't do you any good. Doesn't do you any good at all. why P.D. Williams, I think just in the heat of the battle, went for a pin attempt. You don't win this match by pinning your That's opponent. That's right. You don't win this match by forcing your opponent to submit. There's only one way you win. Take down that X Division title belt. Now, you've got to use your best moves. If he can use a Canadian Destroyer right now, he will. He can put somebody out. He can keep somebody from pulling him down the road. But you're right. Pins or submissions mean nothing in this match. If you think about it, I think the number one strategy point has to be avoid one of the three patented finishing moves. You've got to avoid the Canadian destroyer, Petey Williams, no question. You've got to avoid the cradle shot with Chris Saban, as well as the Styles Clash, because a move like that can debilitate you, can take you out of the play and allow your opponent to climb the cable and take down the championship belt. I'll tell you right now, AJ Styles, you can see he is just, this is a match that has looted him. I'll never forget when he lost it the last time. It was the one time when Shane and Kazarian came down with the belt together. And they were co champs for a while. And then they had to solve that problem by having the gauntlet, and that's how Petey Williams became the exhibition champion over five months ago. Oh, think about wow. that. Styles and Williams and AJ. We were broadcasting in another city. You're right. Now spring up and oh, AJ Styles can kick you from anywhere. I mean, this guy can. He's got eyes in the back of his head, Mike. AJ. Tried to block that move. Great effort by Williams, but Styles connects nonetheless. You see Chris Saban, and I'll tell you what you've got to do if you you want to win this match. You've got to let two of the wrestlers get involved. You've got to let them get focused on each other where they lose sight of you so that you can shimmy up the, the poles and get on top of the steel cable and grab that belt. As you can see, Saban realizing he can't win unless he's up on those ropes. Well, you're right. One of the good strategies might be just to try to avoid the other two. Yes. And you're right, maybe sneak up from behind and go up that steel structure, climb across and take down the title. Petey, I think that's what he's got in mind, just oh. as we talked about it. Well, he well, knows. He's and style battling. Oh, Petey look at that camera shot. And right there. Take down. What an incredible shot. He he over the road. That great oh, shot. Oh, what a move, though. If he comes off the road, I don't know if he slipped. Williams up there was, yeah, he was up there in the, in the crux of the, of the X, 
but he was stuck. He couldn't reach up without losing his balance. And then when AJ Gracie coming off the ropes, he couldn't hold on any longer. Now Saban quickly springs off the top turnbuckle. Hand over hand. Look at how he tries to hold his feet AJ, up there. AJ, AJ, just, you're right, just trying to stop the momentum. Saban and Styles. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, what a move by Saban. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to show that again if it's possible. You've got to see it again. Come on, guys in the truck. Get us a replay of this. Look at this. Ask and you shall receive it. Check wow. it out. Just when you think you've seen everything, you watch a TNA pay-per-view and you realize that you are watching
Jay's awesome. This is awesome. I've heard both chants from this crowd because it's an appreciative audience. These three warriors doing everything with no limitations, everything within their physical power, and AJ's up to the cable. He didn't even have the strength to jump off the pole up there. He's just doing this on sheer willpower. Sheer willpower. Will the styles clash? Allow AJ to not only win his first ultimate X, but regain he, the championship belt that he made famous. Oh, he just can't he even do arm. it. It was the arm. He can't hold the arm up. He it, knows it. But, I mean, if you think the oh, a Canadian destroyer. I saw it coming. Out of nowhere, Peter Williams snuck in and hit the most devastating move in TNA that you voted, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Oh, man. Any other time that would lead to a victory because he'd get a pin. But that's just step one. Yes, he hit the destroyer, but he's still got to take down the title. Look how glazed he's, his eyes are. He doesn't even know where he is right now. The only thing he's looking up at is that belt. Oh, what a move by Petey Williams. This is his. He spiked him, dropped him on his head with the DDT, did Petey Williams to Chris Saban, and now the champion. Going to reel him in here, going to rope him in. I think he wants to make sure there's nobody that can interfere with him. Nobody. And there he goes. There he goes. But Saban is not going to allow it. Saban stops him. Oh, look, these guys are in such sheer pain. Looks like you're back in the king's court, big man. You had your shot tonight. Let me tell you something. Yeah, what do you want to tell me, Kevin? Whoa, 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 you whoa, had whoa, your whoa. chance, Kevin. You had your chance. No, on, With that belt, that belt comes money. Oh, I'm yeah. coming after that belt. I'm coming after that belt. I've got the belt. I've got all the money. It ain't over yet. Oh, yeah? Is that how you think, Kev? We'll see. It ain't over yet. Hey, come watch. What do you think, Don? 
Let's regroup. Let's get it back together. Two title matches down, and guess what? NWA World's Heavyweight title, the big one, is now. What better way to break it down than to look at the tail of the tape? Heights fairly equal. Slight edge to Monty with the weight advantage. Check that out. Almost a 30-pound edge for the alpha male, the challenger. But look at the bottom line. Experience, years pro, king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett, clearly has the edge over the alpha male. I'll tell you something, too. Jeff Jarrett has held this title for so long, he knows how to keep it. You don't keep a, the NWA World Championship this long without knowing every trick in the book, without being able to take advantage of every situation, and without having something called heart and skill. And you can't deny the King of the Mountain got all of that. It was back on June the 2nd of 2004 when Jeff Jarrett won that ball in a King of the Mountain match. Ever since, Jared demands to be known as the King of the Mountain. And here comes the challenger. Earlier this evening, here at Final Resolution, the alpha male Monty Brown, he survived the triple threat elimination match. Kevin Nash, Diamond Dallas Page, they were the other two competitors. They were eliminated. One man remained. It's the alpha male Monty One thing, just one goal in mind. That's winning the NWA World's Heavyweight title. That chance, that opportunity awaits the Alpha Male. I'll tell you what, he earned it by going through two of the greatest names in this business. By going through Kevin Nash and Diamond Dallas Page. He's earned the right to be here. A lot of people feel like his destiny is tonight. We've known it's coming for a long time. This man had such a immense talent. He's gonna have to get past the experienced edge of the King of the Mountain. For the past several weeks, we witnessed the friction among the kings of wrestling. Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, and yes, this man, the King of the Mountain, the reigning NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Jeff Jarrett. I wonder if it's a sense of relief, as you mentioned earlier, that Jarrett doesn't have to go into the ring against Kevin Nash. No, it's not Kevin Nash. No, it's not Diamond Dallas Page. But it's a man who just recently on impact took Jeff Jarrett to the limit. Monty Brown came just this close to winning that title belt that you're so darn proud of, Jeff Jarrett. This is another chance for the alpha male. NWA title at stake. Are you ready for this one, Don? Oh, I'm ready for this. What a night it's been. What a way to culminate it. All around ringside, and you realize that yes, the fans here in Orlando, Florida, as well as this great audience at home watching this pay per view, they're ready as well. Let's go to JB Jeremy Borash for the ring introductions and the NWA title bout. Go, JB. The following contest is scheduled for your main, scheduled for one fall, and is your final resolution main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, the challenger. He weighed in this morning at 267 pounds and is the number one contender for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World from the Serengeti. This is the Alpha Male, Monty. Morning at 235 pounds. 
This is what we've been waiting for. The hours of anticipation here at Final Resolution. The weeks that have been leading up to this incredible pay-per-view event. And yes, if you've been watching this thing, yes, it has been incredible. But this is the big one. The NWA World's Heavyweight Championship belt. It's at stake. Jeff Jarrett to defend against the alpha male Monty Brown. But Don, I think maybe the most important factor in this matchup is that Monty Brown has already wrestled once tonight and wrestled a, a physical matchup against Kevin Nash and Diamond Dallas Page. And now he goes in against a man who is not only fresh, but has been able to sit back, watch, and scout, and anticipate his opponent. Not only that, too, Mike, today you're talking about it, going up against a man who's already beaten him once before. A man who knows what it takes to beat Money Brown. Now, you know Money Brown is dream of the dream match since the day on impact when he lost that title to Jeff Jarrett. Oh, nice move there by Jarrett. But you know what? I, I believe he's just got to just shut the fatigue out of his mind. Just let it go. He can't let Jarrett play mind games like Jarrett's trying to do right now. And he can't worry about the physicality of it and how tired he is. He, it's his one shot right here tonight. He's got to, if he can, just bring it off. Well, when it's something that you've been waiting for your entire life, when you've been anticipating this moment like Monty Brown has, this is the chance for Monty Brown to prove to Jeff Jarrett. He doesn't have to prove it to us because we know it, but to prove to Jeff Jarrett that he's not a quote-unquote double-A ball player. Oh, absolutely, and I'll tell you something. I don't even believe Jeff Jarrett believes that. I, I think he just uses that just to, to get under the skin of Monty Brown. Nice drop kick there by Jeff Jarrett. Wow. Just kind of going the way he wants it right now. You're right. First offensive moves of the matchup come from the defending champion, and there you see the spread again. Mike, I gotta ask you a question. How tough is it for Money Brown? Because you can't look ahead to this match. You gotta worry about the first. So he concentrated all along on DDP and Kevin Nash. All right, he accomplished that goal. But really, he hasn't had much time to focus on the game plan with Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett had all the time in the world to focus on this. Maybe that's why Jeff Jarrett has been in control here in the opening minute of this matchup. Brown and Jarrett circling, measuring each other. A tentative, almost a healing out process here in the early going. Hammerlock quickly up to a side headlock by the defending champ. No doubt who the crowd's behind in this match. They've admired Monty Brown. From afar, Monty Brown, somebody that when he first started his business, wasn't someone the crowd naturally liked. Wasn't someone the crowd got behind, but they just admired his work ethic, his skill, his determination, his charisma, exactly. his strength. And his strength is on display. Wow, he gets it. Elevated press slam by the alpha male, and he takes Jarrett down to the mat with authority and with a thud. Jarrett, however, back up to his feet. Surprised Monty Brown with the knee to the midsection. Follows up in the corner with another. This is too easy. Too easy? Oh, listen to him. I mean, you've got to be confident with you when you're the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. It goes with the territory. But to be that cocky? Oh, oh. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm Jeff Jarrett, look at Monty Brown. Just kind of doing the old strut. Hit right in his, back in his grill. But I'll tell you something. If Jeff Jarrett wants to stand toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Strength to strength against Monty Brown. He's not going to come out on top. He's got to use his experience and his cunning. Stuck at the clothesline by Jarrett. Oh, well, there it is. The experience, cunning, shortcuts, whatever you want to call it. should avoid that pounce. But Monty Brown has to avoid the stroke of Jeff Jarrett as well. Absolutely. Ooh, telegraph of the clothesline by Jarrett Foster. Monty Brown able to connect with the kick. Oh, just charges up Jarrett, went for the clothesline. And when he went lying down to the floor. He, went, he, just, he had too much momentum there, Mike. He just went at it too hard. Jeff Jarrett saw it and used it. Man, wow. Jarrett just goes flying. Look at the streak of Monty Brown. Wow. Slingshot cross body oh. block by Jarrett. Monty Brown catches him in midair. Surprisingly enough, was prepared for it. Now takes him up to his shoulder. I'll tell you what, after what he's just 
see here tonight. He probably felt like he had to come over the rope, but he did it to 40. Buddy Brown is on the screen. Again, there you see the veteran. The experience of Jared. Able to shrug Buddy Brown off. First send him into the steel guardrail. And, I'm sorry, into the steel post, and then toss him over the guardrail. And this is what Jeff Jarrett likes. That's the taking into an element that he's familiar with. Running out the crowd. Something he does well. He'll use everything to his advantage. Steps, chairs, rails. Jarrett taking it. You're right out of the impact zone. Steel chair in hand. Oh, wobbling with a shot across the back. I'll tell you what. You saw Ripley Moody Jones trying to stop it. I mean, Jared has to keep in mind as well the disqualification rule here, too. I mean, remember, if you're disqualified, you lose the title. That's At right. the same time, I think Rudy Charles wants to give him maybe a little extra leeway. Well, he's got to. This, this isn't just any match. It's just for all the marbles. This is for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. You've got to give him a little leeway. You cannot pull the trigger too quick because you're going to upset a lot of people. And again, Jared still has the steel chair. Monty Brown. steel chair. Oh, and no. Look out, look out. Coming over here. Oh, 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 just geez. slammed him right into the table. Money Brown. Look out. To the chair. He just crashed the chair down across the back. Charles putting in the count. 
He's up to nine, but Jarrett's got his shoulders up off the mat, and Jarrett's back up to a knee and going to try and mount a comeback. I almost think he was using his experience right there and letting the count get to nine so he can catch a little extra breath. That's the smart things you do when you're a champion. First right hand by Jarrett connected. The second one was blocked. Monty and Brown fighting back. Look at Monty Brown. Monty's getting the better of it. And I'm telling you right now, he's just letting them have it one after another. Oh, Jarrett ducks two clotheslines. Oh, Monty Brown showing his streak. Oh, wait a minute. He's got Jarrett up. He's no man. So close, taking Jared up into the air, twisting, driving him down to the mat, power bomb style, not able to put him away. Nice boot right there, as you see. Look at this. Oh, something different from Body Brown. He calls it the circle of life. A one arm spinning neck breaker. Two. Oh. Oh, just in time, Jared gets the arm up. The shoulder up just in time. Monty Brown looking into the eyes of referee Rudy Charles as Rudy holds up two fingers. He knows he just didn't have enough. Jarrett puts on the brakes. Knee to the midsection, doubles over the challenger. And another follow move, another knee. Here goes the stroke. And set him up. No, man, look at this. Oh, reverse by Brown, contact made. Referee Rudy Charles and Jarrett, you can see Charles. Holding oh, on to the knee. Oh, holding and favoring the knee. Oh. Monty was right back to the attack. Smart move by Monty Brown. You can't worry about the situation, referee Charles. You've got to stay focused on the task at hand, which is your chance to win the world title. Jeff Jarrett also looking, showing his experience again, getting the leg up, getting the boot up. No. And there's the patented guitar. There it is. Charles doesn't say it. Referee Charles does it. No, Jarrett's referee. just waiting. Look out for the guitar. Oh, he just crushes him. Crushes him. After everything he's been through, he's still standing. No, he couldn't stand any longer.
Thomas is trying to just throw Charles out of the ring. I'll tell you what, the Money Browns got to try it right here. Jared the guitar. Oh, God. Jared stealing him with the guitar again. Here he goes. Money Brown's fighting to his feet, though. Presentation of TNA Wrestling.